Hi, this is Maya Isaksson for Spectrum Noir and today I am going to color this foiled image uh, using the Aqua Blend pencils. Uh, and I am using just two of the sets today. Uh, it's the naturals and the florals. So I'm going to use mostly pinks and greens for this. Uh, and uh, I could tell you about how I followed this Im image. As you saw, I, I showed you first. I had printed uh, this picture uh, onto craft cardstock using a laser printer. Uh, and it's really important that you use a laser printer and not an inkjet printer uh, because the foil won't stick to inkjet. It's reactive to toner that's in the uh, laser printer. So this is a digital stamp and it makes it really easy to do this with it. So you just print it onto regular paper or as I did in uh, uh, on car uh, craft cardstock. Uh, and then you run it through either if you have a mink machine or a laminator uh, with foil on top with the pretty side up. Uh, and then you just remove the foil and it's really really pretty. I used pink foil for this one because I was going to color my uh, magnolia flowers uh, pink. Uh, so it's really easy coloring. Uh, this cardstock isn't made for water coloring, it's just regular uh, Nina cardstock. It's not very thick uh, and it's not made to take a lot of water. So I'm using this water brush for this uh, and it just lets out a small amount of water um, and um, you can't really be hard on the paper. You have to be pretty careful uh, or it will start to peel but I, I didn't find any problem at all to get the, the pigment to, res to uh, dissolve and spread. Uh, these uh, colors are very very nice to work with. Um, so I just do it like this. I scribble the pencil wherever there are dark areas like shading and uh, where the where the petals overlap each other and in the base uh, and depending on if I want it to cover if I want the color to cover the whole petal or just part of it, I start either on um, the the colored part or the part that's not colored. Uh, so if you take the color uh, from the colored part and pull it out over the whole petal, then it will spread and it will be get uh, pretty uniform in color. And if you start on the uh, on the part that you didn't color first, then you just put out some water and like here and you can mix uh, You can just activate the pigment so it's smooth and you don't have to cover the whole uh, leaf or the petal uh, So it, depending on what effect you want you can do it different ways uh, And the one thing I, I noticed I didn't have any problem with this peeling or starting to uh, look bad or warp or anything because of the small amount of water that I put down but uh, you have to uh, work pretty fast because the pigments will sort of s get sucked up by the fibers of the paper so it's not easy to move it after it dries um, so uh, you don't want to leave any harsh lines or anything. You have to smooth it out right away and then uh, you can go back and layer it but uh, you have to be kind of careful because it doesn't it's not like watercolor paper that's that's sort of keeps the pigment on top of the paper. It soaks in and dries pretty quick so just uh, try to be a bit fast and you'll be fine. I didn't have any any problems uh, because these are pretty small surfaces to color. Um, so as you saw I just went in with a pink color uh, and I pulled out the color 
Uh, and here I am coloring the leaf with a green color, so you don't need many pencils. Uh, I think I used four for this whole image, maybe. Uh, and I made sure they are uh, sharpened so you can get into the small places. Uh, I used to be pretty bad at uh, sharpening my pencils, both these and uh, the color blends, uh, because I thought it didn't matter, but it actually does. It, uh, it's a big difference. And um, if you get some color outside, if you don't let it dry, you can add some more water and just blot it off with a bit of paper. Uh, and if you're wondering why I keep coloring on my hand, <laughs> it's because I, uh, when I have colored one color uh, and start on a new area, I want to scribble the leftover pigments off on the paper towel beside me uh, and sometimes it dries the brush up so I have to squeeze it and um, sort of get it running again and then I I paint on the back of my hand to <laughs> to be sure it's not dripping wet but it's still moist so that's why I keep coloring on my hand <laughs> uh, so here I'm done mostly done with the with the branches and the flowers and the leaves and you can see it looks really really nice uh, with that foil. Uh, the next step uh, it's totally optional as everything but uh, I wanted to not have the flowers floating in, uh, in the air so I do a slight outline with a pencil. Um, this one is blue to indicate the sky and I'll go in inside uh, in the little in-between areas inside of the flowers too. Um, and then I'll go with my paintbrush and pull all the color out to make it uh, fade out. And this is a really nice technique to do with these pencils. Uh, it's, it gives a smooth uh, transition out to nothingness or to <laughs> uncolored paper. Um, and uh, you don't have to use blue. Uh, this one is, as I said, to indicate the sky behind the flowers. But I have used uh, browns or greys to just make a drop shadow and make them pop out of the paper a bit. And it's uh, all colors looks really good while doing this. So you can see here I, <laughs> I activate the brush again and see that it's moist enough but not too moist and then I just go in and activate the color and this is just for the inside shapes I just go and make sure it's smooth and, and uh, uh, it's kind of quick coloring uh, it's not this quick I sped it up three times but it's still uh, it took me about half an hour to do this whole image uh, and uh, it's a fairly complex image with lots of shading and it still didn't take me that long. Uh, it's usually a, a bigger process or a longer process. And you can see here uh, the color is fading out and uh, when the paper dries it's a really smooth transition out to the craft color. When you pick colors for this sh choose a bit uh, brighter colors or more saturated colors because they will uh, be a bit duller because of the brown background. Uh, so that's a good thing if you want to use like a, a pretty uh, light color you still have to go up a few uh, um, you have to go up so it's a bit darker and a bit more intense than you actually think it's going to be. And so this is the whole image ready and I hope you enjoyed watching me color and talk and I will show you the finished project that I made from this. Uh, it's hard to capture the foil but uh, thank you for watching and I hope uh, you got inspired. Please visit uh, the Spectrum Noir blog for more inspiration. Bye!